Welcome to today's Luxon Explain video. We have an exciting topic to cover about the development of our campus. The topic we are going into today is that of mini server architecture. What does the architecture mean here? We have ventilation centers for the office, warehouse, hotel, restaurant and more. Like this auditorium you can see behind us. It is still a bit of a building site, but it will be ready soon. So today's video is about how do you set up a mini server so that they all work together in a network so that they function and do the right thing. I have my right hand man here with me to speak on this campus matter, Sebastian. Sebastian, you know how many mini servers we have here, in which areas and what they all do. So let's go through it. We first have the office area. Right, in the office area, we currently have 15 mini servers installed. The office area covers 3,000 square meters, which within this area, we have created units called spaces. There are nine uniform spaces in the office, and then there are a few unique and different ones. So in each of these spaces, we have a mini server, with this mini server then being connected to all of the peripheral devices in the spaces that can be used. We use mini server compacts here, with them being in charge of the area's loudspeakers, tree devices, a few relays, and the air products for the shading motors. What else can you think of? What else do we have connected up there? Yes, all of the Bolimo products that complete MSR topic is included. This is your That's exactly what there is as well. They are a key part. So everything that is in the space is bundled up and communicates with and gets communication from that space's mini server. In these spaces, the mini server sits somewhere in the ceiling, making the cabling relatively straightforward for trained locks on professionals due to the short cable routes. The mini server for each space is then connected to the network, making up an office area network. And then there is a lounge area, which is a versatile space where staff meet to exchange ideas. And there are also larger meeting rooms, which is all implemented with which technology? With client gateway, we have built that. What gains an advantage from being connected to the gateway? Yes, at the end of the day, we can directly transfer all the communication to the config inside, making it relatively easy to convert between the mini servers. So then you need not send commands around via other topologies like UDP or something. We have a common visualization with having everything bundled into one program. Exactly, it is one program. Visualization, we have everything bundled into one program. This is the optimal way to go about things. We have installed the same system in other areas of the campus, for example, the hotel. How many mini servers are in the hotel? So in the hotel itself, we now have 80 mini servers for the hotel room. In other words, every room has its own mini server and they're all built identically. We have programmed the multiplier. There's already a second video about it. We also have a few mini series for the general areas on campus, such as the corridors, for example. So we have a mini server compact in every room. The reason for this is simple. It's because it makes it a lot easier for electricians if there's a straightforward architecture, as it means that every room is the same to install and this is is the basis for the multiplier. It is important to note that they are not in a client gateway as it would not help here. We have a lot of data to exchange. What do we use to exchange it? We use network intercommunications. This primarily concerns the whole HVAC challenge. We send values over, like we have a heating requirement. Do we have a cooling requirement? Is the ventilation currently active so that we also know which volume flows are required? We precisely send over all the values via network intercommunication. And then there are topics such as how much power does our PV system produce. Such topics are sent out for a broadcast to the system, i.e. every mini server in the network is allowed to receive and evaluate this information. Like in a hotel room, there will be somewhere for it to be displayed, for example on a touch pure flex or something. I don't know if we're really going to do that, but it's conceivable which means that we have a lot of parameters that we send out as global variables. Simply, they are sent out and the network intercommunication is highly efficient and is designed to be fail-safe. We didn't have to wire anything extra up, we just thought about how the whole communication would work. 
Now on to mini servers with very important responsibilities, the ones in charge of the central ventilation units. And I think this would be a very good time for us to head over to one of these ventilation centers. And then it will make it easier for us both to look into the entire heating and cooling distribution together. Wärme und Kälteverteilung einfach gemeinsam schauen, oder? Sebastian, we are now in the low voltage main distribution center. There is also a mini server compact here. What tasks does it have? The mini server compact is used to store all of the individual meter readings. The power meter records the outgoing feeders and the amount of power we call up from the transformer. It is then transmitted via the broadcast to the individual mini server via the network intercommunication. We have a power supply and backup here. Right. There we have the adjoining corridors and rooms with the 24 volt supply, which the mini server can also handle. The nice thing is we just put it into operation now. As you can see, the mini server is still blinking there, so they're not quite finished with it yet, as it's in the middle of the construction site and is in charge of the vending machines downstairs. That is also a story, this is quite a relaxed matter, but in the client gateway, once you have decided what to call the rooms, a tip at this point, Please specify the rooms at the time the plans are drawn and not during the commissioning on the construction site. This will just make your life simpler. Make sure that they are all written down correctly in the documentation, as if not in 10 years time when reviewing things in the system, you won't be able to find anything at all. So we have digitally named the rooms, each of the environments, and we're now putting this into operation. And so then, if we come to the conclusion later on that a client gateway for the common areas would be good after all, then we just do it like that, and everything is connected and functioning in a common, maintainable configuration and interface for our colleagues in the caretaker's office. I would say, let's take a look at another ventilation centre and its distribution of energy. Now you find us here, standing in front of a ventilation centre. We have large ventilation centres around campus. How many do we have like this one? We have seven large ventilation systems and two smaller ones. We have a separate mini server for each of the ventilation systems. The control cabinets are all completely identical in design, so we can simply scale it up. Exactly, so we don't have to reinvent the program each time. We use the normal mini server here, it's relatively clear we are in MSR. We need analog inputs, we have the needed relays, we also have a Modbus extension. So what do we do with that? We have taken the Modbus extension for the fan motors, making it simple. One wire, a few analog inputs and then that's it. Everything is here that you need in terms of control technology in such a ventilation centre. The ventilation centres are not connected via a client gateway, instead each ventilation centre is self-sufficient with the information being communicated via network intercommunication. And all of the mini servers have a trust together, and we haven't even talked about that yet. Why do we have all of the mini servers connected to each other in a trust? We currently have a simple system of user management. We have a user group which everyone involved in the commissioning of the campus is in. If we want to use a new mini server during commissioning, we simply add it to the trust and immediately every user can log in with their usual credentials to that mini server. And if ever we need an NFC code touch somewhere for access and you want to grant user permissions, e.g. you could have a control cabinet like this. If it was now somewhere else and in an accessible area, we could lock it electronically and then you would just mount an NFC code touch on it with a latch. And everyone has their access permissions that goes through the trust. It is a great way of integrating something new into the access system without having to redo the access system software, making the trust essential for the connection of new technologies to ones that may currently be in use. By the way, this trust technology is not only used in the locks on campus and in the former base camp building, but is also used in our offices around the globe. Approximately how many locations are using this trust? 15 locations. 15, where a wide variety of staff from many different countries enter each of the offices at greatly different times. Currently, there are international training weeks here at Head Office Campus. These are for our global partners to attend a special expert training. 
I've seen many of our international locks on colleagues from the likes of Spain, the Czech Republic, Belgium, Holland, etc. It's easy to give them immediate appropriate access as they just bring their home office NFC key fobs with them to the campus and they can use this for that campus access. For our admin creating a temporary access assignment to the user group for the time that they are over for. This means they can enter the appropriate spaces in the building for their seniority. So the trust system is a wonderful way to manage users across many locations internationally. What else do we want to look at? Maybe a quick look at a hotel room to see the solution we have in place there? Well then I would say let's go to the hotel side of the building to conclude this video. The main feature that influences the mini server architecture is our trust system. With this trust system, we have the option of synchronizing users between mini servers, and there is also the possibility for digital and analog values to be sent via the trust. This here is one of the hotel rooms. You can see that it's already taped up. This is because they're already finished. The floor is already oiled, meaning you can actually no longer open them. You are currently one of the authorized people with access. This means you have a master key or one of the master keys. Sebastian, you are in the user group full access. What do you have in there? I have an Android phone with NFC. You have Android handy. Android handy. You have Android handy. You have an iPhone and Apple. Okay, I have an NFC here. Cool to show that you just held up your mobile phone and you had authorization, allowing you to open the door. Maybe you can open it again so we can briefly film. It's not a crazily elaborate Loxon setup in there anyway. It's just again a mini sub with a few peripherals, which is all you can really fit in a hotel room like this. To sum up, with the mini server architecture, no building is too big because the mini server network can be broken down to an individual hotel room or client gateway network. Like the 3,000 square meter office, you could also have a 10,000 square meter client gateway, say. Depending on how it suits each project, it is flexible. The architecture is very much adapted to the needs of the installation. But the installation should also be coherent and simple. The more coherent the installation, the less documentation that is needed. For example, in our hotel room, you have a mini server, you have the peripherals, write down the detailed explanation of the installation location, and then you basically don't really need much documentation to maintain the installation after that. Because the best so-called doc documentation is the config file. But don't you worry, there is of course professional documentation on such a large construction site. So that concludes our video, thank you for watching, and I will provide you with a sneak peek on the topic of the next campus video. It will be on the topic of access, where we go into more detail about how to set up a great access system for a complex large building. Thanks again for watching, see you soon. In diesem Sinne, alles Gute und bis bald.